Hello, and welcome back to Inspiration for Your Soul. I'm Callie Rawson, and today's guest is Dr. Norma Camacho, an audiologist for 17 years who was inspired to become a hearing doctor when her seven-year-old nephew was diagnosed with hearing loss. Dr. Norma is the founder of Doctors of Hearing, Inc. and the Love to Hear Foundation. She identified an important need in the industry early in her career, and in 2011, she created an ethical place where people go to receive reliable information about hearing loss and the most current technology in hearing aids. She's bilingual in English and Spanish. She received her doctorate degree in audiology with honors at Salus University in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. She also received honors in hearing aids and technology in grand school when she obtained her master's of science in communicative disorders from California State University, Northridge. Dr. Norma earned her beneficial BA in sociology from California State University of Los Angeles, giving her the skills to understand how human action and consciousness both shape and are shaped by surrounding cultures and social structures when working with multiple populations. Dr. Camacho was awarded Woman of the Year in 2019 by Congresswoman Judy Chu for her dedication to finding solutions for all people with hearing loss and especially for disadvantaged college students, musicians, veterans, and low-income Latinos. She also provides these groups with emotional support. The mayor of Pasadena also recognized her for her dedicated efforts to those with hearing loss and honored her with the certificate of recognition. Dr. Camacho is currently working on Spanish videos to provide guidance and information to this population as currently limited information exists in Spanish. This information is intended to serve as guidance to avoid confusion and to avoid being victimized by those that sell amplifiers that do not work. Please visit doctorsofhearing.com for more information. And thank you for welcoming Dr. Norma Camacho. Our wonderfully devoted guest, Dr. Camacho, will open this episode with what inspires her to be an audiologist, the plight of over 48 million people affected with hearing loss in the United States, and how all of us can ease their suffering and stop suicides from happening. Our talk begins after, as she shares the struggles and triumphs of moving to the United States as a teen without even knowing how to speak or understand English. The powerful lessons that she gained and how she became an honors graduate, woman of the year, and founder of three Doctors of Hearing offices and the Love to Hear Foundation. What inspires me about being an audiologist? The fact that those with hearing loss have a voice but most people don't hear their needs. We have 48 million Americans that have some degree of hearing loss, and the Office of the Deaf estimates 3 million deaf and hard of hearing persons reside in California alone. And the greater Los Angeles and surrounding counties is home to over 800,000 deaf and hard of hearing people. And most of these people feel alone in the world and even depressed because they lack the support from all of us. A study by the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders show that more than 11% of those with hearing loss also had depression, as opposed to only 5% on the general population. This is really shocking. No one should be depressed because of hearing loss. The fact that our society lacks the compassion to understand their needs is shocking because hard of hearing people only need simple accommodations. They need accommodations such as annunciation, repeating, and for us to provide with lip reading. Please understand that hard of hearing people have permanent damage in the inner ear, at least some of them and hearing aids can only do so much. So we need to accommodate them. We need to enunciate, we need to repeat, we need to provide with lip reading, but most importantly, they need your patience. I'm shocked at the lack of compassion for people suffering from hearing loss. 
So many get ignored and feel ashamed, depressed, and hurt because they do not get recognition by their own family, friends, and professionals, and even by their own doctors. But I know we can fix this. It's not that we're doing this intentionally. We just need to know how to accommodate them and how this makes them feel. I'm really shocked about the severe lack of education about these issues that affect millions of Americans. I simply cannot look at people this isolated and depressed and not feel the need to act or to speak up on their behalf. It hurts me seeing the pain in their eyes from something so really few professionals are willing to talk about or that our others are willing to help with. The fact that some can afford to buy hearing aids is really devastating. Hearing is a right, not a commodity. Others people's struggles with hearing loss also inspire me. I do not I do not like to see people isolate themselves or become depressed due to the lack of proper communication. I really dislike that the hearing population does not have patience for those with hearing loss. And I've seen it in my clinic so many times. And oftentimes I have to stop the hearing and ask them to have some comp compassion for those that have hearing loss. To me, the most gratifying thing about being an audiologist is being able to make a difference in someone's life. Hearing connects people in so many levels and no one should be deprived from such a gift. Welcome, Dr. Norma. Thank you so much for taking this time. I know you're swamped with three offices and all these patients. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it really is different the way we practice audiology now. Uh, you really have to think before you act. And I think that's the hardest thing because we're saving lives. We're helping people, but we're saving lives. And that's the main thing, saving lives, then helping people. Mm -hmm. So um, we're wearing mask, mask uh, shields and uh, uh, masks, uh, gloves, and just trying to really be careful with every action that we take. A lot of sanitation going on, a lot of thinking. At the end, we're pretty exhausted because uh, it takes a lot, but we're helping people. Yeah, you are extraordinary. I had the privilege of coming to your office and experiencing you taking impressions for me as a musician. And just the care and attention that you did for me was, it was mind blowing because I've been in the medical field for 30 years and you were just very patient. You took your time and you actually did two impressions, one as a rehearsal and two, you did the second one once you felt like I was comfortable. And so when you're working with patients that can't hear you, um, it, you have to be slower and more, um, because with the mask on, most people that can't hear, they, they read lips, but because right. you have a mask on. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. Yes, uh, we try to accommodate them. And uh, that is one thing that really, I think I want the public to hear today, that we need to think about the population that is hard of hearing, um, especially them, because they're the ones that, f that feel the most isolated right now. The ones that may be the most depressed mm -hmm. because our society hardly thinks of them. And you brought up a really good point. They depend on lip reading. So we have 48 million Americans with some degree of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. um, but we have 3 million deaf and hard of hearing people that, that reside in California alone. So that's a lot of Americans with hearing loss yeah. and a lot of people in California alone. Mm -hmm. In greater Los Angeles surrounding counties, we have over 800 thousand deaf and hard of hearing people wow. so imagine all those people right now not being able to understand and how they feel because they can't read your lips 
I've talked to a lot of them that come my way and they really feel isolated and depressed because there's that lack of support for most of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Really devastating. So you've created a foundation called Love to Hear. Yes. And you're dedicated to all people with hearing loss, but you especially are focusing on uh, veterans, students, yes. and um, Latinos, and musicians. So uh, you're going to be launching this soon, or have you launched already? It, it, it's ready. It, it was incorporated in 2016. Mm-hmm. So we've been doing our work. My company is actually the first sponsor. Mm-hmm. So we have been sponsoring students since 2016. Wow. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Uh-huh. So um, we, we help, like you said, mainly students. And um, these, these are the population that really cannot afford to buy hearing aids. Mm-hmm. So anyone that comes to our for-profit organization, Doctors of Hearing, sponsors love to hear and they don't leave. No one leaves without a hearing aid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need to really make sure that these people get the help that they need because depression is the main issue that is causing, uh, sorry, the hearing loss is the main main issue that is causing the hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So we don't want anybody depressed, right? Because of hearing loss. Yeah. Because there's people that are committing suicide because they can't hear. Well, you would be surprised to know that yes, there there is an amount of people out there that will do that because there are twice as likely to struggle with their mental health. Mm-hmm. And um, individuals, especially those that suffer from tinnitus, which is known as ringing in the ears, mm-hmm. are 33% more likely to have ma- major depression due to that. Mm-hmm. So of course, you know, we know that hearing loss is associated with uh, tinnitus or tinnitus as mm-hmm. some people call it, which is ringing in the ear that comes in different forms. And because of all your work with the public and you give so much, you were um, awarded, you were nominated and awarded by Judy Chu, um, the woman of the year last year. I want to say congratulations. And I know how hard you work and I, you deserve it so much. And um, with all your work with trying to help pass bills, for the hearing impaired. Uh, you've gone to Washington, D.C. You've spoken with lots of politicians there and the you've gone to Sacramento with your dad um, and you just are forging ahead for people. So you run three offices, a foundation, and you're doing all this with the bills. I just really applaud you for all the work that you do. Um. You know, I I really feel, I don't want to say compel because that's not the right word to use. I really feel that I need to be that voice for them. Um, I feel like they don't have a voice. My patients come here and they tell me about their struggles and their needs. And I just feel like those that can't hear are not hearing them. And it's time that we learn and be educated about other people's needs not just our needs. There's so many Americans with hearing loss that you don't even know mm-hmm. because in our culture, we're used to repeating to people. Mm-hmm. Well, why did you say repeat that? And if you find someone that is patient, they'll repeat it. But if you don't, then that person will make the heart of hearing feel bad mm-hmm. and depressed because now they're going to put them down and say, what, you didn't hear me? Don't you wear hearing aids? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is It is a cruel reality that um, I hope other people understand that it's not easy for them. And I really, truly thank you for giving me the voice today to voice this because it is so important for the hearing to know that these are the struggles, everyday struggles. Yeah. So we've had a chance to sit and talk um, in the past 
but I'm so happy that our audience here at Inspiration for Your Soul is going to hear how it all began because you you were not born in the United States. No, no, I was, yeah. I was actually born in Mexico City. So um, one of the challenges that I had, I can tell you started pretty early in my life. I was only 14 years old when I, when my father brought me from Mexico. And coming to America was a culture shock because I was in my teens and they didn't speak the language. But my father uh, brought us to East Los Angeles and we were only there for maybe a few months. And he said, well, I got to take you up north and you guys are going to live there with your mother because that's where you're going to learn English. So he took us to a small town in McFarland, California. And when we got there, it was a tremendous culture shock because no one that we knew spoke um, Spanish. So we went to school and it was a struggle. We went to the library and it was a struggle. Being 14 years old and not being able to communicate was a real struggle. Wow. Not only being a teenager, but moving to a whole nother country. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, and I'll never forget my father's words because he said to us, don't worry, you'll learn how to swim. And back then I really didn't take it well because, you know, how can I swim if no one can teach me? But little did I know that I had to teach myself. And so we did, uh, my oldest sister, myself, and my two little siblings, we had to swim and learn English. And we, we were first to learn it very early in our lives. Wow. Yeah, so it's kind of parallel to what you do because even though you spoke a language, you were in an area that didn't speak it. So in a way, people, didn't understand you and you couldn't understand them it it's quite um a parallel it really is mm -hmm. and i think that really makes me understand even more what they go through because although it's not it's not the same i do feel that at some point i've been there yeah and it was a big lesson for me because i know what it's like not to be understood Yes, mm -hmm. that is correct. So, um, how did you get back on track? Like, you were struggling and everything. What had you pivot in a way that just had you just start swimming? That I realized at one point that I had no choice because that's exactly what my, my father said. You need to learn how to swim. So, Swimming require going to the library and reading and trying to read or getting a dictionary and trying to translate my words. Um, asking people to help me repeat certain words that I couldn't repeat. Um, watching a lot of TV and just being persistent and doing what I knew I had to do because that was my mission, that was my homework and I had no other choice. So I feel that um, the lesson that I learned from that is that life has no limits and we just have to keep on pressing every day. There's going to be big obstacles that are going to come our way, but we're just going to have to keep on pressing. And at the end, we're going to realize how strong we were because we don't even know how strong we can be until things are done. And we look back and go, Wow, it was done. Yeah. <laughs> so coming to America, not speaking English, and then learning English, and not only just learning English, but you graduated with honors in everything that you've done. You are a member of every single board of California, of the United States. You... Do you feel that that hard time in your life 
like helped you become you know an honored student like because of that situation and you pressing hard it just became natural for you to work harder so when you went to become a doctor you worked just as hard as you did there and it just made you uh an extraordinary student um that is a really good question i i think that um what really inspire me is the fact that i love people and i love helping people and so in order for me to i feel like in order for me to be the best or to do my best i have to try my best so uh when i was a student i was the type of student that asked a lot of questions lots of questions and i always said to myself i don't really care what he thinks of me but i have to learn it right because i'm going to make an impact in the future in people's life so it's not just for the test to get an a or an a plus it's for me to make an impact in people's life so i think that's the added to that i had and the a just came you know the a plus or honor student just came as a bonus but the real goal behind that was to help people and to be to do my best mm. to help them yeah to learn as much as you could yes in case someone came to you and you needed that information right person. that's exactly right yes mm. and i i was reading that you know when you were a young girl um your nephew was born or around 7 he was he was diagnosed with hearing loss and yes. you were a teenager at that time no i was actually uh in college and i was a biology major and i wanted to become a doctor a medical doctor specifically a brain surgeon um and when i found out about my nephew having repetitive ear infections um it really broke my heart but when i found out that he had to see an audiologist because he was going to need hearing aids at the age of 7 due to repetitive ear infections that could not be fixed could not fix the the problem in the uh, middle ear um my sister came and asked me if i knew what an audiologist was and i said no i don't know what an audiologist is so i went and inquire about that and i just told myself i'm going to become an audiologist Mm. as this is i think where my passion is going to be mm. and so because of him actually i became an audiologist oh that's so beautiful you know i didn't even know what an audiologist was i've always he- heard of ear nose and throat doctors uh-huh but i never heard of audiologist until i met you and Hi. every musician needs to know about this because i mean every everyone that has hard of hearing needs to know you because you provide so much information on your website doctorsofhearing.com and and people can send questions to you as well right yes yes so wonderful yes we try to help the community in so many levels and i think that's what makes us unique that we really try to educate the public about hearing loss and hearing aids and we're really open uh when it comes to um giving them the right information and guiding them in the right path yes and you're also um starting to do videos for the spanish speaking community as well right mm-hmm. yes um so um i notice a need in the spanish community uh especially when those patients come my way and they want to be educated about the different options that they have and oftentimes they ask about amplifiers and uh you know low cost uh over the counter hearing aids and they come with big problems big issues they say well this didn't work for me and i paid $1000 or $500 and then we of course analyze what they have and it's not a hearing aid it's an mm-hmm. amplifier and so what? then Yes. Wouldn't an amplifier hurt someone's ear? 
Yes. Um, so Just let's say saying that I'm like, Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you have and I thank you for bringing that up because we actually had a patient that came our way and said, I can't wear this hearing aid. It's way too loud and it hurts me when I wear it. And my daughter bought it for me and she's forcing me to wear it because she says she paid $700 for it and she wants me to wear it. So we looked at it and the patient only had a mild hearing loss after the test and this amplifier was like for probably a severe hearing loss. Oh no. So imagine wearing that that eventually can hurt your yeah, yeah your inner ear mm-hmm. yes yeah so these are the things that we're doing we're creating videos to walk the uh, patient through the process of getting to know the different providers in the industry that are going to be able to help them with their needs specifically audiology yes yeah wow i mean and it can be kind of embarrassing like I have a couple of family members that um, they have the hearing aid, but they don't wear them because they're embarrassed for some reason. Well, again, going back to our society, um, our society has created a certain way that you should look, that you should mm. act. And a lot of times, unfortunately, the way people get treated affects them. And so um, good example is when um, one of my patients was really young and he was wearing hearing aids, kids will come and, you know, make fun of him because of his hearing aids or just get close to him and speak loudly uh, instead of just talking to him because now he's wearing hearing aids and making comments and jokes about it. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Do I have to talk louder? Are you deaf? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that is part of it. But the good news is that now hearing aids have come a long way. Mm -hmm. So we have different sizes. Uh, If people come and try to look for something invisible, now the hair can do the job in covering those devices. Mm -hmm. So we've come really a long way. And so um, if people look for those kind of solutions, we do have it available for them. Mm -hmm. And so you're serving the Los Angeles community, Rancho Cucamonga and Pasadena area. Do you have an affiliation with um, audiologists around the globe where you can, if someone contacts you, from like say if someone contacts you from montana um someone listening um wants to ask you do you have a um a directory where you could maybe introduce that person to someone in that area or can you do a one-on-one through a zoom with a client um we can probably refer them um elsewhere if we do find a provider uh, that we have some connections Uh, we don't guarantee of course that we can find that particular area Um, but we do know very good audiologists in other areas unfortunately because i'm licensed in california i can only do business in california oh so yeah there is laws and restrictions regarding that and uh the hipaa act is is uh you know very strict mm-hmm. on issues like this but uh, so is there a directory that the public um you could send the public to if they're in another state other than california um, um I, yeah i would uh highly recommend um that they uh contact the academy of audiology okay the american academy of audiology mm-hmm. or the american Uh, speech and hearing association there's other associations that they can go by and they'll be glad or the american board of ideology and they'll be uh, glad to provide them with uh, resources and uh, ideologists in their area unfortunately we don't have that set up yet but that's something that we would like to work on the future on our awesome website that we have uh, doctorsofhearing.com we can and also love to hear uh, that we're on the process of uh, getting it done. 
uh, we can probably put resources for them there because that's what we've been doing in the past. We're trying to provide uh, in our website information for free services and uh, various things. But that's something, yeah, that we can work on, definitely. Wow, well, that's so wonderful. And your love to hear foundation, um, how can people contact you about that, especially students that are in the California area um, that are going for their degree and they can't hear their teacher or, you know, it's, it's difficult. So they just go to love to hear.org or to doctors of hearing.com. Um, for right now, we're going to uh, request that they go to drsafirian.com because we're working on Love to Hear's website. Wonderful. Yes. And that foundation is just, it's really needed. And Dr. Norma, thank you so much. You never cease to amaze me. I mean, I'm just so lucky that you could hop on tonight. I know that you're still working and thank you so much for your time. And is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience um i just really would like to send a message to the audience and i just want to share that i'm really shocked at the lack of compassion for people that suffer from hearing loss um so many get ignored and they feel ashamed and hurt because they don't get recognition by, by family friends and professionals even by their own doctors sometimes. They come and they say, you know, my patient, my doctor got frustrated with me or my psychologist got frustrated with me and didn't want to repeat or it's not facing me. And, you know, just things like that. They're looking at their notes and they're not looking at me. Um, I think that most doctors, or I'll say doctors don't know. They don't know that they're not doing this intentionally. Mm -hmm. There is just something that they do on a daily basis. But I do want to send the message to the public that, especially right now with this pandemic, we need to think about those that are hard of hearing. And we need to be educated on these issues because it's time that we think about others. Uh, this is not just about us. It's about other people. And I can't help to share this with you because I cannot look at people this isolated and not feel the need to act. It's time that we act. It's time that we say, that we say something. It really hurts me seeing the pain in their eyes. It's something that I really want you guys to think about this because very few professionals will enunciate very few professionals would look at them to acknowledge them, especially the deaf. You know, when you're deaf, you wear hearing aids, but it doesn't mean that, and it is considered deaf, but they have very little hearing. And what happens when people look at them with hearing aids, the first thing they say, well, can't you hear me? I'm sorry, but they have hearing loss and they still need, because they have very little residual hearing, they still need for you to enunciate, to look at them, and to be compassionate and patient. You'll never know what it's like to have hearing loss unless you walk in their shoes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with the audience because sometimes, you know, when we're talking to people, we get so distracted. Yes. And not acknowledging the person and looking at them and right. People need to be acknowledged, especially people that cannot hear. And right. the mask and not being able to see the lips is probably right now so devastating. It is. It is so oh. devastating that that's what you're going to hear the most. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I, I know that your assistant just came in and said you are you have another patient, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. We are taking some walk-ins at the end of the day that need to hear these are not my patients mm -hmm. um there's providers that are not open mm -hmm. and i can't help them during business hours because i'm seeing my patients but this is the time that we see them the other patients that are not my patients oh my gosh dr norma thank you so much for all the love and the care that you have it really impacts people in such a profound way. And 
it's even impacting me just by listening. I'm not even the patient. So I just, um, it's amazing. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening and thank you for sending this message to the public that is really needed for them to, to hear. Absolutely.